Welcome everyone to our online class on computer. In the previous classes, you have already learned about the hardware and software with its examples and types. Today, I'm here present with input and output devices. Okay, so if you have understood what is hardware, it will be easy time for you to understand what are the input devices and what are the output devices. So before we start, let us get more familiar with the basic terminologies. If we are learning what is input devices and output devices, we must have a knowledge about the basic terms used in a computer. And that is BIOS, which stands for Basic Input output system and let me remind my dear students when you write the full form of the abbreviated letters the first letter has to be always the capital letter just like basic B is in capital input I is in capital output O is in capital similarly system S is also in capital so do not forget, whenever you write or solve the exercises, when you do the full forms of the given abbreviated letters, always remember to make the first letter in capital. So we will be learning today only about the output devices and the input devices, which are the most important part, basic parts of the computer system. Without them, the computer does not function or work at all. So today our class I will proceed with the input devices. Here, you can see many examples of input devices like keyboard, graphic pad, wave camera, mouse, scanner, joystick, trackball, digital camera, and microphone. We have learned about all these uh, devices in the previous classes as well. The common function of all these devices is to accept the input from the user and convert into the machine language and send it to the computer. So we can define input device in many ways. So here you can see on the screen, an input device is any hardware device that sends data to a computer allowing you to interact with and control it. So the definitions we have learned many times. I hope you will be able to remember and define what is the input devices if the questions ask you. Here, key groups in the keyboard. We all of us know why the keyboards are used. We all of us are most excited to use the keyboard and a mouse when it comes to the computer. When we use the computer, mostly we use is mouse and a keyboard. They are the input devices which accepts the data from us us as in user and convert into the machine lang understandable language and gives it to the computer. So there are five main parts to most desktop keyboards. These parts includes alphanumeric keypad as in letters, the arrow keys as in navigation controls, the control keys are also included in the navigation keys and the function keys. As you can see, function keys ranges from F1 to F12. All we can see in your laptop and computer if you are using. And number pad is also included within the alphanumeric. Alphabets and the numbers combines to become alphanumeric keys on the keyboard. So we have alphabets at the left hand side, whereas the number keypad are at the right hand side of the keyboard. But also numbers are available above the overweight as you can see there number keys aligned right above the list. So if we get to know the orientation or the location of the keys where about on the keyboard it will help you to learn how to type more faster and work on a computer. So moving on to the next input device. Before that, let us know about the functions of the keys on the keyboard. This is very important. 
Let me tell you, whenever you learn about the input device and output devices, there are certain things which you must highlight and focus. Now, these are the important things that you learn in input devices. Okay, keyboard. When we see the keyboard, there's nothing. There's a keypad and a number where we type by sitting in front of the computer. To operate the computer, we need to type on the keyboard and use a mouse. But what are the special things that we can perform on a computer or using a keyboard? Here you can see shift. Shift. The shift key, if you hold this down, all letters you type will appear in capitals. Used also to type the top character on a key. Shift plus 3 equals to pounds. Now what it is trying to say is shift key will help you to type the special characters which are at the upper half which are at the upper half of the keyboard as you can see here in the previous picture there are number there are number keys and the upper half of the number keys contains the special characters you can see on your keyboards if you're using the if you're using the keyboard or laptops right now you can just verify it and caps lock keys are the keys which allows you to type all the text of a bits in capital letter and i mean all the letters whatever the letters you type will be in a capital letters and backspace key this deletes the letter to the left of the cursor always remember always highlight this left of the cursor because there there is another key which also helps you to delete the letter but more specifically if you have to delete the letter to the left of the cursor then which key you will be using yes it's a backspace key and as you can see here just below the backspace key we have got a del that is delete key okay this delete key is also used to delete the letters from the document that you have prepared but to the right side of the cursor always remember respect to the cursor left hand side of the letters are deleted by using the backspace key and the right hand side of the cursor are deleted by using the delete key and we have tab uh, you can see here small pictures in the left hand side why the tab keys are used this key is used to advance the cursor to the next tab stop on the ruler for example when you move from one option to the another options you can simply use tab key from the keyboard instead of using a mouse okay enter key okay all of you know the use of enter key we often use enter key to go to the next level or confirm any text that we have given to the computer enter key is used when you want to go to the next line first there are two uses of enter key the first use is to go to the next line when you work on a particular software or the document in the computer second pressing it twice will leave a clear line space between the paragraph when you press twice it also helps you to change the paragraphs on the document so these are the basic things that you have already performed and you already know so even though these things you have already done you should note it down you should keep it in your mind so that you will never forget it these are the basic things and you need to know it because without the computer and the proper use of computer we cannot perform a simple task and nowadays the use of computer is increasing day by day for every sort of work for like learning teaching writing preparing editing and a lot of things okay now where we come to the next input device and all of you know what it is it's a mouse here i have shown the part of mouse parts of mouse there are four parts of the mouse right uh, a primary button usually to the left button here you can see a left button it's a primary button and the second and the secondary button usually the right button you can see here right button over here okay right button and the primary button is one you will use most often most of the time whenever we work on the computer you will be using the left button and most 
mice as in the mouse of the computers also include a scroll wheel between the buttons like between the left and right button we can see a black color button over there and it's a wheel actually like a small wheel like we have in our vehicles it will help you to move your fingers and uh, which will be functioning as a movement of the your pages or documents on the computer screen so this button is called a scroll wheel buttons to and it will be helping you to scroll through the documents and web pages more easily so these are the functions of the keyboard and the mouse parts so just like the keyboard similarly there are also some specific particular functions of the mouse which we will be learning here in a computer we all of us know the basic input device or the basic pointing device is mouse right so by using a mouse we can perform a several tasks so let us go to those tasks how do you perform those tasks one by one first in mouse action the first thing that we perform is click click as in single click single click selects an item on the screen remember second drag and drop now how do we do it we will simply click on the left button of the mouse to a particular icon and then without releasing our finger we will move the mouse from one position to the other position so that it will move an item on the screen so we will release the finger when we want to move a particular items on the on the screen third double click as in left button of the mouse when you click double to the left button of the mouse it will open a particular document or a program which you have selected before clicking fourth right clicking after you select a particular items on the computer screen and right click on the mouse you will be getting a list of commands because the monitor screen the at the monitor screen you'll be seeing a list of commands being displayed all right so mouse wheel we all of us have studied the mouse wheel is located between the left button and the right button of the mouse and it simply scrolls and zooms the document and the web pages that you are currently using now there's another input device very important and it is it acts as a it acts as a mouse or it performs the similar task to that of the mouse in the portable computers nowadays and all of you can see and see clearly it's a touchpad okay there are all there are also three parts of the touchpad just like that of the mouse because nowadays touchpad has been replacing the use of mouse day by day see there touchpad left main mouse button and right mouse button so and there is a black big rectangular area above the left and right button which is the sensitive part of the laptop where we can touch with our finger and move the cursor around the computer screen a touchpad or a trackpad is a flat control surface used to move the cursor and perform other functions on a computer remember touchpad is also known as a trackpad touchpads are commonly found on laptop and replace the functionality of a mouse a touchpad is designed to be controlled with your finger so though the pad is known as a touchpad which can be touched with the finger and perform the task on our computers so touchpad also performs a similar actions and a just like that of the mouse as we have discussed earlier the action of the touchpad is simple left click button click for the selection drag and drop drop by uh, by just holding the left button of the mouse and dragging through the touch pad and releasing the finger from the left button of the mouse we will perform a drag and drop action whereas double click is in the left button of the mouse to open a particular document or the program that you have selected already and right click is also available on the touch pad which will perform the same task that it will display a list of commands and there's no wheel mouse we can simply use a touchpad to scroll the pages from the touchpad 
okay so this is all little description about the touch pad how do we use the touch pad we will place our fingers on this black spot as you can see here a touch pad we will be pressing our uh, fingers on it and perform the task on a computer so the next is output devices don't forget today's topic is just input devices and output devices in the earlier classes also we have already discussed about the other input devices which are very very essential in our daily life remember there are two basic input devices they are mouse and a keyboard which have which we have just discussed now output devices moving on to the further uh, topic it's output devices output devices can be defined in any way it is a device which excel, which we, uh, which produces the meaningful information to the user in the form of text picture audio video right some of the examples of output devices are monitor printer speakers headset projector plotter so we can simply define output device is any piece of computer hardware equipment which converts information into the human readable form okay we will be learning more about the types of monitors and types of printer here because they are the basic output devices in the computer system don't forget the basic output device as in it is necessary to perform a very simple task even for a very simple task we require four basic parts that's mouse keyboard monitor and a cpu now here we are in a crt monitor crt monitor you can see it looks like a traditional television that we used to have in our home in our mother's generation father's generations you may ask with your parents output devices in output devices monitor is an output device that displays the information in a pictorial form pictorial as in picture form which we can see through our eyes a monitor usually comprises the visual display circuitry casing and power supply so monitor is also known as video which stands for visual display unit remember here as well the first letter of visual v the first letter of display d and the first letter of unit u is all in capital letters always remember whenever you write the full forms of the given abbreviated letter the first letter of each word has to be in capital i'm reminding you again crt stands for cathode ray tube and the all first letter of cathode ray tube crt is in capital letter so what's a cathode ray tube actually cathode ray tube is a vacuum tube that contains one or more electron guns and a phosphorus phosphorescent screen and is used to display the images as we all of us know whenever we turn on the monitor television we get to see the images over there we enjoy through the image and sound produced through the speakers isn't it so crt is such kind of output device that modulates accelerates and deflects electron beam onto the screen to create the image okay this will be a little bit harder for you to understand so what you just need to understand is monitor crt is one of the traditional and the old version of the monitor nowadays we have got many advanced monitors like lcd monitor and led monitor here lcd stands for a liquid crystal display a flat panel screen that uses the light liquid sorry liquid crystal display lcd technology and connects to a computer laptops and used lcd screens almost exclusively and the lcd monitor is the standard display screen for the desktop computer we may have this lcd monitor screen as a television screen at our home as well try to note it down and the next is led monitor led stands for light emitting diode led monitor or led display is a flat screen flat panel computer monitor or television the actual difference between this and a typical lcd monitor is black lighting okay it's about the resolution try to understand it led is the most advanced monitor up to today 
And next we have printer and its types. We all of us know why the printers are used. Printer are used to get a hard copy output from the computer, though the printer plotter are known as a hard copy output device. A printer is a device that accepts text and graphic output from a computer and transfers the information to paper, usually to standard size sets of paper. Printers vary in size, speed, sophistication, and cost. In general, more expensive printers are used for higher resolution color printing, called impact matrix printing. Is a computer printing process in which ink is applied to a surface using a relatively low resolution dot matrix for layout. So this is the dot matrix printer which we used to have in our previous days. Next is inkjet printer. There are three types of printers that I have included here. Inkjet printing is a type of computer printing printing what inkjet printer is a little bit more advanced than that of the dot matrix printer that recreates the digital images by propelling droplets of ink onto the paper in plastic substrates inkjet printers are the most commonly used type of printer and range from small expensive consumer models to expensive professional machines because it is very necessary nowadays we need to produce the uh, output in the form of papers right okay the last type of laser printer is laser printing is an electrostatic digital printing process okay it's a device which is an electronic digital primary process it produces high quality text and graphics by repeatedly passing a laser beam back and forth over a negatively charged cylinder called a drum. To define a differently charged image, you need to learn more about it. So this were all about the printers. Now I've come to the end of the class for today. I hope you have learned more or less about input devices and output device. If you have any queries and confusion, please feel free to ask. For now, be safe and learn at home. Thank you everyone.